Bye, Indiana. So today is Q&A day. We're gonna answer some questions you've sent in about the Homestead Festival. But first, a story. I was at my sister Candy's the other night with Indiana for dinner and on the way home, we were driving in the Gator and I looked up and there was Johnny from Johnny and June, our two peacocks. Johnny was on top of the big red barn behind the schoolhouse. So I stopped and we were looking up there and I, I pulled out the camera and filmed a little bit and I was thinking to myself, what is he doing up there on top of that barn? And as I was thinking it, I heard my little one in the seat next to me say, What the hell? So I turned off the camera, afraid to turn around, still looking at Johnny on the barn, and I heard her say again, What the hell is he doing up there? I found myself thinking, where in the world would she have learned that? It must be from the kids at school. We started driving away. I thought, well, I'm going to call Miss Rebecca and tell her, Indy's learning some stuff she shouldn't be learning. And I said, Indy, now, where did you pick that up? Where did you learn that word? And she goes, from you, Papa. From me? Where? She said, from your song. I said, which song? She said, your Christmas album. Oh, no. What the hell? It's the holiday. We should have thought about that 10 years ago when we made the Christmas album. Anyway, back to the Q&A. Question number one is from Rachel. Will Temple Grandin have a Q&A and will we get a chance to meet her? Yes to both. She's going to have a Q&A during her speech and afterwards in a tent right nearby. She is going to be signing books and I know she'll take a picture with you because when Miss Rebecca and some of her friends went and saw her in Alabama earlier in the year, they took a picture with her there. Number two, it is on my bucket list to meet Jess from Roots and Refuge. She is my best friend, but she just doesn't know it yet. Do we get a chance to talk to the speakers one-on-one? -on -one? That is from Casey. Yes, I do think you'll get a chance to meet them all. Um, Jess will be here. She's wonderful. I've got to spend some time with her and her husband. I think she's going to be signing her book. I think other folks have sent their books in if they've written one. Some are going to have vendor booths where they'll be sitting and spending most of the day. Some will just come and do autograph sessions and they'll be walking around actually listening to and learning just like you so you can say hello to them. I know I will. Number three is from Rosa. How many people on your team are helping to put this event together? Well, let's see. There's me, Keith, Michael, Heather, Rebecca, Dalton, Rachel, Megan, Stacy, John, I think that's 10, plus there's some other folks behind the scenes who are working very, very hard. Thank you for asking that. Number four is from Lauren. Are there activities for children and what are they? And will we get a chance to see the schoolhouse or the Hobbit house? Yes to all three. There's gonna be lots of fun things for kids to do from bouncy houses to games to a big like corn crib that they can spend some time playing in, almost like a sandbox filled with corn. There's gonna be cornhole, there's gonna be so an ice cream truck and snow cones. They're not very homesteady, but they are fun for kids, so we wanted to have them. And yes, you'll get to see the schoolhouse, the grounds around it, and the Hobbit house. Next question. We love the idea of the festival, but it's hard to justify the cost. What makes the event worth the ticket price? That is a very good question. That's actually the big question. Why are the ticket prices so high? First off, let me say that if I had my way, it would be free or 50 bucks or not much money at all because I mostly just want people to be able to experience and enjoy it and get a chance to learn some incredible things that might change their life but I was overruled by people who are smarter than me who know how hard and how expensive it is to put something like this together. Because it's our first year and we've never done it before, we have tons of first time cost. Everything from creating infrastructure, like a separate entrance here at the back of our farm, adding water and power lines all over the place, and also making sure this one is special and bringing in as many of our dream teachers and singers as possible to kick the first one off. And we have, which is amazing, but it also can be expensive. The truth is, to give you some context of how expensive it is to put this on, just the basic cost of the festival for two days, that Friday and Saturday, June 3rd and 4th, 
will cost more than four times what I paid for my entire farm. Did I mention that I might be a little bit crazy? But it's also really exciting because we're trying to do something we have never done before. This year we started with zero sponsors and had to build it from the ground up. Hopefully next year things might be different. We now have lots of sponsors who have come on board for the first one and hopefully they'll be on board next year along with some other sponsors and maybe we can get most of the festival paid for before it even gets here. That would be amazing. So stay tuned. I think next year is going to be a whole different story. I hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking. The next question is from Jerry. Where and how far is lodging from your place and can people camp at the festival? Well, about four miles from here, right at the interstate, there's seven or eight or nine or ten new hotels. They're really nice. They're filling up quickly, but that's a place you can stay. And also there's Airbnbs. There's a campground not far away. And on that note, no, people can't camp at the festival, but there are campgrounds nearby. You can look all those things up. Some of that information is on our website, and some of it you can just Google and find. Fred writes, we will be traveling from the West Coast to the festival and are planning to pick up folding chairs. Is there anything else we need to bring? Well, you don't have to bring folding chairs. We're going to have chairs in all the tents and also for the main stage, but you can bring them if you want to. And on that note, people are asking if they can bring their own food and drinks to the festival. Yes, you can bring your own food and drinks to the festival. You can bring coolers. Folks will check them as you come in. You can also bring blankets if you want to do a picnic. There's also going to be food trucks and lots of things to choose from here if you want. <coughs> Becky asks, will there be shaded areas for festival goers to rest, eat, etc.? Yes, there will be some. First off, all the tents. There's four big main tents plus some other smaller tents. The parking lot in our concert hall is just going to be a whole food vendor area with seating. Is that going to have a big tent? Let me see. All right. Right here. This is all the food. This is the concert hall. This is the milk house where we are right now. All this is going to be food trucks and tables and a place where you can eat. This is a mock-up of everything. This is where... If we had thousands and thousands of people, which we probably will have quite a few, this is all parking. These are all vendors. These are tents. This is the main, this is the main stage. This is a demonstration area. Thank you to my nephew Dalton and Law for sketching this up. There aren't gonna be that many trees around, but there are lots of place underneath of tents. All right, just a couple more questions. This one is from Sam. Will you be videotaping the festival for those who can't be there? We've thought a lot about it. We looked into the possibility of being able to stream it, but that's not gonna happen this year, maybe next year. But Michael and a bunch of us will be capturing, and so we'll be sure to share on my vlog in some other places. So stay tuned. Okay, so here's the last one. Rachel says, I can't make it to this year's festival. Will there be another one next year? I sure hope so. We've had such a great time getting this one together, working on it as a team. It's actually completely transformed our farm. It's so beautiful here. I can't wait for you to come and see it. And if you're not able to come this year, we are sure hoping it's something we get to do again and again and again. Yes, I hope we have more festivals in the future, but right now we're still concentrating on this one. We hope you can join us. See you tomorrow. And so when this one is complete, we're gonna to get together again. We're gonna start brainstorming and thinking about what can we do better? What can we change? That means I need to turn off the water. I'm filling up a swimming pool at the house for Indy, a little swimming pool in the back. That says, go turn off the pool. And so I have to go turn off the water.